We are back on the track, this time with salmon. Uh, as I always suggest, you have some art in your kitchen. This happens to be a plate I did many years ago. Uh, but of course, paintings are what you have to have. Uh, the Norwegians suggest, and I have Norwegian blood in me, suggest that you burn a candle when you work. We're not doing that, but we have art in the room. That's kind of similar to my book. So, um, I take my piece of salmon and I flood it with, that's right, some lime juice. You don't have to do that. That's not part of this deal. I'm just suggesting that sometimes I like to marinate, I love that kind of word, um, my salmon filet in some lime juice before I begin, but that's not important. We're going to talk about fish for a minute, and then we're going to do three different things to finish off this meal. Um, the best salmon I ever had was at, that's right, Eugenie Le Bon. That's where my daughter had her uh, peanut butter sandwich. It was Atlantic salmon. Well, Atlantic salmon here, of course, is a farm-raised salmon. This is Atlantic. I love Atlantic. And, of course, they just bring it in from Norway coming from the ocean. Anyway, because it's the Atlantic Ocean. Thinking about the greatest fish I've ever had, several things come to mind. One is that uh, petrale, which is a sole, uh, is one of my favorite fish. And my best dish of that was in San Francisco, the Tadish Grill. And so when you order it there, the your waiter turns around and screams, petrale! And then you hear back from the kitchen, patrale! And it's wonderful fish. My second best fish, I think, was uh, pike. Pike is a brilliant fish to have. I had it in um, Solieu, and the chef was uh, Bernard Lissieu. Uh, this is in Burgundy, again in France. And um, he's now dead. So if you go to Solieu, you will you'll find the restaurant because it's the only three-star restaurant in Solieu. I mean, if you get to a small town in France, there's only one three-star if you can find one in every town, which is rare. So, um, the pike, he served it in a sauce which was a veal reduction sauce. It was not anything that was like what you'd expect with a fish. It was a uh, dark brown sauce. It was remarkable. So now, the salmon we're going to have, I learned this along the way, you can actually have salmon. First off, you, you, you turn on your oven to a high temperature, and then you turn on your uh, surface to a very high temperature, and you cook with a uh, cast iron skillet. Turn it up so that it's just burning hot. And before you get to throwing this on, you, um, I recommend, of course, putting pepper. That's right, you've seen this grainer before. The only one I'll use. And salt. Because, you know, as always, I tell you, the secret to cooking is salt. Put some salt on. You know, not too much. And then, and here's the magic, because you're not going to use any oil. This is one of these things you can do without any oil at all. So the only fat in this meal is coming from the salmon itself. And uh, it's a really good fat coming from salmon. The fattest salmon you can get comes out of the Columbia River. And it's called spring salmon. And when I say you can get it, you got to wink there because, man, you cannot find spring salmon anywhere. You can almost never find it in the city of Seattle. But if you look really hard, you can. Only for about a month. So, salmon in general doesn't need any oil. You can cook it with mustard, which is really something. Um, I cook it with Roland Dijon. In France, they would use their cheap mustard, which is Amour, which is um, the cheapest mustard you could buy in any store in all of France, and that's what they cook everything with there. And this is pretty thrifty. It's hard to find, that's right, Roland Dijon, but it's worth it if you can find it. All right, so this has got to get hotter than hell. It's probably hot enough. I could cut this in half. I probably should, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy here. And you just throw it on. Yeah, there you go. And you wait a minute, and of course then you have to flip it over 
before you put it in the oven. You finish it in the oven. Oh, good heavens. We're going to have um, scalloped potatoes with this and uh, zucchini. Usually you put a fan on, but that would be deafening in here. So we're not going to do that. You just have to uh, get it cooked a bit. Oh! That's why you need a fan. Oh, yeah. You can live with it. If I can, you can. You do want it to get a, uh, a crispy top without being oily crispy. That's the difference. Old Bernard Lucio wouldn't do this. He would throw in some oil so that his pike would have a crispy top. Well, we're not doing that. We're cooking without oil, which is hard to find. A really, in fact, this is a really good meal for that. All right, here we go. Flipping it over. Okay, so that's all you get there. Then you throw it in the oven. Ow! In this case, we're going to throw it in on the side because we're going to put in our scalloped potatoes pretty soon. Um, now, oftentimes, of course, I would have pre-cut the uh, shredded down fabulous potatoes because why not? But being out of time, I didn't do that. So you get to see me, you know, slice up some potatoes. You want to be, roughly speaking, the same thickness. It almost doesn't make any difference what thickness, but you know they gotta cook, so you want them sort of thin. Just don't you don't want them real thin. You don't want an eighth of an inch potatoes. And we will come back to this in a moment. Excellent tea, Christine. All right, now we're gonna get on to that's right, scallop potatoes, which goes wonderfully with salmon. Salmon's still in there. It can take any length of time. We'll make it go, you know, 10 or 15 minutes, but it could go longer, it could go even shorter, depending upon what you like, your sound to be like. And then I sliced up our potatoes, and you cover the bottom, single layer. Everything you do here is single layer stuff. Doesn't make any difference how that goes out, but single layer would be smart because that's what you need. All right, um, and then you sprinkle a little bit of flour and there's it doesn't make any difference what order you do this um, some pepper and that's right a wink of salt and this happens between every layer and you throw in some cheese doesn't have to be very precise at all you do a bad job and it'd be fine and then you pour in some milk not a lot of milk, just enough. <laughs> Meaning it doesn't make any difference how much you put in, but you got to put in some. And then you put down another layer of, that's right, potatoes. Because that's what you're cooking here. Cover up what you just did as best you can. And I'm going to throw down my next layer of cheese early because I see that there's some areas here that didn't get enough cheese. You want to cover the whole thing with cheese if you can. Throw in some uh, flour. Not much, but some. Pepper. You know, four grinds. Um, if you have a real pepper grinder. A little bit of salt, not much. And um, some more milk. Throw the milk in. Then you repeat it. That's right. More potatoes. Because that's what you're cooking. Is potatoes. Fill the area up as best you can. And just because it's easiest now, I'm throwing in flour now. The flour is vital. You really need the flour. Pepper. A little salt. You know, pretty much everything in this recipe is vital. <laughs> Look at this doggone cheese that's just melting away on me. That's terrible. Uh, that won't happen to you because you're not going to let it melt. 
and we're gonna have to put some cheese on top. So we will have to lay some more cheese here. All right. I think that's the first time you've said that something did matter. <laughs> Christine, really, really, it's incredible of you. Now we need some more cheese. So what we're gonna do is, of course, slice a little bit of more cheese. Oh yeah. It's not like we are eating at Arpeggio, okay? You can get away with plenty here. It's your kitchen, not theirs. They've got the greatest kitchen in the world, not you. Not that I'm dumping on you. All right, so then um, you cook this, that's right, for one hour at 400. And I'm throwing this in with the fish, which is at 450. And uh, before you know it, I'll turn that down. But it doesn't really make any difference. Okay, now we're going to do zucchini. And I've cut them about, you know, just bigger than an eighth. You try not to get to a quarter. You get, you know, three eighths. But it doesn't really make any difference what size you do your zucchini either. But, um, oh, doggone it. And I was going to throw in a little sage on top of my potatoes, which I did not do. But I never do that, so it doesn't make any difference. But I thought it would be festive. So now we wait until the doggone butter is melted, which, as you know, won't be long. All right, so the butter is melted. You throw in your zucchini in the butter and you just warm it up. Now the beauty about this is this is not too important either but it would be nice if you cooked it for a little while. You want to serve your zucchini when it's you know a little on the raw side. Not raw but you know only slightly cooked. So this takes no time at all but the key to this is cooking it in butter, nothing else. This is not a completely oil-free meal. I mean, let's face it. And then uh, a little salt on your zucchini. Stove top wise, all you need is some salt and some butter on cut up zucchini and you have magnificent vegetables. Oh, I've got it way too hot. All right, well, I'm just turning it off then. Because it doesn't make any difference how much you cook this, but I want to overcook it. Meaning, if it's this hot, you should turn it off. Wait for a minute so it gets, you know, done on both sides. Or whatever. And then suddenly, you have a meal with salmon with no oil, done with mustard. Probably not as good as Michelle Gerard made for me. But it's great, and it's so good for you, because you're not adding anything to it. Not that adding things to things is a bad idea, but in this case, it's better for you. So I'm back here taking my fish out and leaving the potatoes in, and I'm going to cut my heat on the potatoes down to 400, as I said I would, but then I just didn't do it. Couldn't be bothered. And when I take the fish out, I usually throw in some lime juice, but that's not essential. It doesn't really make any difference. The fish is done. But I like lime juice on top of, or lemon juice on top of the salmon. Normally you time this so you do the potatoes first, they'd come out at the same time, so you just cut it up and serve it. We're not doing that. Excellent tea, Christine. Excellent.